Uh, here we have uh, Andrea Tosato that uh, will give us uh, some insights about uh, dependency management in Go. And uh, so let's start. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, okay, perfect. So thank you for being here. This talk is uh, really about dependency management in Go, one of the most debated arguments in the Golan community. And of course, right now, it's really a never-ending story. It started at the very early stage of the development and design of the programming language. And probably, uh, we will see it uh, through this uh, uh, talk, uh, probably an uh, argument of conversation that will end in 2017. Let's see why. So first of all, let's introduce myself. I'm Andrea Tosato, I work for a company called Open Exchange. It's a German company building email platform and DNS with PowerDNS. Uh, I did many, many, many things in the past. I studied computer science theory, programming languages theories at university, focusing in particular on concurrencies. So I studied PyCalculus, CSP, that is the underlying theory uh, on top of which has been built the concept of channel in Golang. Uh, I've been a researcher in cloud technologies. I've been a PHP developer, Java developer. I did OpenStack, Docker, DevOps, and so on. But the funny thing is, is that I always, 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 from the very beginning, loved Golang. I tried to do Golang every time I can, even if my company, the company I was work, working at, were not interested in Golang as technology, I tried to do it from the very beginning. From university, when I discovered it, and I tried to do it in my spare time, every time, because I love it. So this talk will be about dependency management in general, in particular, uh, dependency management in Golang, if we compare the language with the other programming languages out there in the market, and probably most of you are programmers that had uh, any, many different experience with other programming languages, and I did. And dependency management has been my personal issue with Golang from my very beginning, and I will tell you why. So first of all, what is dependency management? Uh, Aka vendoring. Uh, it's the process of moving library code uh, that your program depend on depends on uh, into your own project source. Of course, this is really important because uh, vendoring and dependency management allows you in your code to use uh, external libraries developed by the community uh, or other people uh, in your code, benefit from what the other people developed. And in fact, we were talking about it before, in the talk before, uh, mentioning the uh, message pack or something like that. So we don't have to implement the wall wheel on our own. We can benefit from the community. And of course, dependency management is one of the best practice of software engineering. And this is actually a quote of myself. I really think that if you want to make developers happy, at least if you want to make me happy as a language designer, you have to give me the best tool out there. And of course, dependency management is a really, really important piece of toolkit that I, I would like to have in a language, a proper way to do it. So why I love Go? I love a lot this language because Golang ships with definitely the best toolkit out there. If you look the other programming languages, PHP, Python, Java, none of these programming languages allow you to have installing just the compiler and the interpreter have so great tools like the race condition detector, like go that, go format, something like that. And moreover, despite being a really, really young programming languages, Golang are as really an outstanding standard library. The quality of the code shipped in the standard library, it's really amazing. You can learn, uh, as Francesc was saying in the keynote, you can learn really a lot from the standard library. And I think that the language is really, really uh, uh, young. Uh, it, it has been at the very beginning mainly designed probably for the specific use case of Google. So of the things that they care most probably. And I mean, despite being a language coming from Google, I mean, we can, we see in the community many, many, many library coming out and it's nice. The language is evolving really fast. I love it. And this is also uh, probably because 
the language design is made by people that really are guru of the of programming languages of the internet, of the technologies, modern uh, technologies. I mean, Russ Cox uh, and so on, and guys, yeah, I really love them. And moreover, what I like of Golang, that for instance is not happening in Java, or not so easily happening in Java, is that the community is really important in taking decisions about the future of the language. And we will see uh, dependency management, uh, the dependency management discussion as an, a real example of these kind of things. So the language design is also driven by the community, which is really, really important. And I love Golang, of course, also because of the goofer. It's really the best mascot ever. I mean, not, not an elephant. It's, this is nice. Yeah. Despite all this awesomeness, of course, yeah, I mean, the vision of the Golang team, uh, the original vision of the Golang team uh, uh, regarding um, vendoring, uh, to me has been always, you know, something that I was not agreeing with because, of course, again, this is really, their vision is really, really something that it's made on the specific use case of Google. And I mean, this is what uh, they say in the mailing list of Golang about their vision on, on vendoring, and you can read it. It's, it's hard to understand, it's hard to implement, it's hard to see why they want to copy all the dependency in the main source tree and do it manually controlling. It's hard to do, you know, for the, the, your Aki project you do in the spare time, not at that scale with a, um, a monorepo like Google does. And so, I mean, it does not work. It didn't work it for me. It, it, I found it, beginning with Golang, really hard to understand and to implement. And, and this is where the community really made a difference. Because, of course, the community is made by people with different use cases within respect to the one of Google and immediately found, found in uh, dependency management an opportunity to help the others. And we see in particular in Golang that many, 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 many dependency management tool has been developed and, uh, and uh, proposed by the community. So this is the introduction to my, to my talk. And now let's switch to the shell. What I will do, I, will, I would like it, if it's possible, to be really interactive. I, I tried many different uh, dependency management tools with Golang, and I will show you the most relevant one, uh, the one that I like most. I will tell you why I don't like it, and it, it would be good if I can hear your experience, and you can say what, what, what is your impression, why you use it, and why you don't, as I will do. So let's switch to the shell. So first of all, uh, to introduce you to dependency management in Golang, I, I want to show you a simple, really dummy piece of code I've written. This, is, uh, this, this, uh, this program is called Go What's My IP, and this is really trivial. The idea is just to give you something from the command line, and I'm going through the code that allows you to print your public IP address. This is really, I mean, simple. And because I want you to talk about uh, dependency management, I, I added a really, really useless uh, dependency here that is logros, just to print log me messages. It's, it's really not needed. I can use the uh, FMT, uh, printf, but I'm, I mean, I want to use these kind of things just to show you. So to start, uh, I will use um, Docker as tool to have, okay, as tool to have fresh environment where to show you the differences, uh, the different, different approach of the different programming languages. So let's start. Let's spin up a fresh container. As you see here, I have the main.go file that is exactly the one I was showing you before. And what I want to do, I want to compile this uh, program and to, to get my IP address. So uh, if I print the env, I, I'm exactly in my go path. So what I want to do is to build this package with go build. And of course, it's failing. Because if I see the dependency I do have in my go path, 
what I, I do have in my Go pod, I have nothing except my binary. So the first thing I want to do is to get from uh, GitHub uh, the log roots library. And Go, it's really good at getting dependency. You have this Go get tool, really nice, that allows you to easily import in your Go pod dependency from GitHub or whatever you want. So let's get um, log roots. Oh, okay. Now let's see again. As you can see, okay, it's really huge. But now um, I have in my GoPod also the logroos package, so I can build it. I, be, I can build my binary, and I can run it. Super. Uh, it's, this is my public IP. Okay. There is no new line, but can you see it? Okay. Okay, good, so everything is working. I have in my Go path, uh, the library I depends on, but let's say that I'm working at different projects in the same time. The Go path is something that is somehow global. I, I have two options. I can uh, do some hack with the Go path to make it uh, dependent on the project I'm working on, but I don't like this approach so much because this not, does not allow me to uh, share the same version of the library, uh, li the, the, same, the same version of the libraries I use across my project because I have to get every time new copies of these libraries and this is not so good. So there is no concept of caching. If we think about npm with Node.js, we have this in our own directory. We usually have this Node modus directory where we can have you know all the version of the all the cache version of the dependency we use in our in our uh, project, and the same for Composer with PHP, and the same for every programming language. So the first thing uh, I want to do here is to try something different, and and I don't want really want to have you know in my Go pod the dependency. What, so what we can do here is to try to use uh, submodules to include the dependency in my uh, in my project, the dependency my project needs to be compiled. Submodules are something really wrong. I don't like them, and I will tell you why. So let's start with a fresh environment here, and 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 let's make this project here a Git repository. Now, um, again, uh, I, I of course I cannot build. Let me show you. Go build. Of course, I cannot build the, 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 the project because I miss the dependency, but what I can do is leveraging the Go vendor uh, experiment that now, is, since Go, uh, Go 1.c, I think, is the default, I, I will create a vendor directory inside my, 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 inside my project, uh, for the root directory. What I want to do here is uh, to add as git some module inside the uh, vendor directory log rules. So let's add a submodule. Git submodule add. Uh, log rules, so. Hello, okay. And now what I have to do in the vendor directory is to, of course, put the path of the vendor. Okay, now what the, the git submodule command will do is to do the git uh, checkout of the uh, vendor I'm adding. And if I do three of the vendor directory, I will see the log rules source code here inside the vendor directory. So if I build the package, it will compile. Great. Let's see if it works. It works. Nice. So this is nice. This is really nice also because uh, with some modules, uh, we don't have to uh, commit into Git the, the, the vendor dependencies, but what we will have, we will have a kind of light import inside Git, so all that we will commit is this reference to the, to the submodule inside my repository. So we, it will be like a light copy 
of the dependency without actually committing the files. Moreover, the good things of some modules is that they allow us to pin a specific version of the vendor. And this is, this is really nice, and this is hard to do when you work with the global GoPath because the version you have is the one that you have in the GoPath, so it's nice. But working with submodules is really a mess. Everyone knows it. Removing submodules, updating submodules can be really, really painful, so it's something that definitely you will, don't want to do in, uh, in, in real projects, especially real projects with many vendors because it's, it's really hard. At least I found it all always really, really, really hard. Um, so vendors are, uh, with Git some modules are definitely not the best option, even if someone in the community try to use, uh, to build tools to help the management of uh, Git some modules to, uh, as vendor dependency, and the call is called, and this tool is called uh, manual. So let's switch to something better, and, and it's Godapp. If you think about Docker or the large project uh, uh, out there in the community using uh, Golang as uh, programming languages, most of them at a certain point in time moved to Godapp to manage the dependency. And this is, this is really, really a good thing because Godapp has been the really first successful tool to manage dependency. And the good thing about Godapp, does someone does not know Godapp? Okay, the really good thing about Godapp is that Godapp provides you a tool to import from the GoPod the dependency of your project and to restore the, exact, the specific version of the, the dependency that you need for your project in your GoPod. So it allows you to move specific version from your project to the GoPod and back. And this is, this is really nice. So let's start with Godapp. I, I will use an environment in which I do have uh, Godapp in my GoPath. In my GoPath, here it is. So, this is our project. Let's uh, let's say that we want to start using Godapp. The command we have to use with Godapp to um, save snapshot the dependency that we are using in our project and 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 pin the specific version we do have is Godapp save. And this is not working because I was, uh, as I was explaining, Godapp really relies on the GoPath to work. So what we will do here is we will go get uh, uh, logrus. Wait for the internet connection. Godapp save. And now that's the, what I don't like about Godapp. There is a known issue with Godapp. Uh, with the uh, traversal dependencies, and some, sometimes Godapp just fail uh, with the uh, traversal dependency. This, this issue has been closed and opened in time many, many, many times, and it's really Go version specific as far as I understood, but sometimes Godapp fails. So unexpectedly, I have to save also, I explicitly uh, say get also the, the sysunix package, and do Godapp save again. Okay, this is something really bad with the user experience because you don't explicitly know, uh, you are not explicitly depending on, on uh, the, um, the sysunix package, but uh, Logrus is. And so you don't expect to care about this specific dependency because you are not explicitly using it in your project. So this is something that you discover. And the thing I don't like is that you have to take care about it explicitly. What does Godapp? You all know it creates a really nice directory called Godapps with a Godapps JSON file inside and these files contains all the version and the references to all the version uh, of the dependency that I need. And as you see, this is telling that our project depends on sysunix. That, that, that is not really true, I mean, because we are depending on logros, and logros, again, is depending on sysunix. So it's really also hard to manage this kind of dependency because now we have to take care about the revision of uh, sysunix we are including in our project. And we want logros to take care of it not ourselves. 
So this is something I, I don't really like. By the way, GoDeP is really nice because it allows us to add to Git only the GoDeP's directory, ignoring the vendor directory. So when we check out the project on a fresh machine, we are able automatically to get all the dependency inside without having these uh, R coded in our Git repository using the GoDeP command line and so on. This is, this is really nice. It's really helpful in the workflow and, and this is good. The bad thing about GoDeP that I, don't, I never liked is the fact that it really relies on the path. So if I'm working on another project and then I'm, I switch to this one, if I do, go, I do God App Restore, this is going to break the dependency in com the, the project they share because this is going to rewrite in the Go path, the log roots with the specific version I use in the project I'm working on, even if it's different to the other one. So it's going to change things in my Go path, and I don't want it. I, don't, I just... I want to have in the Go path only my project, probably. I want to have, you know, the thing I'm working on, not the dependency and rewriting the dependency and so on. So this is something I never liked about GoDeP. But there is a tool I like most, and this is GVT. Uh, this, is, this has been done by Filippo um, and Filo Sottile on, on um, on GitHub, and this tool is really amazing, and I used it a lot instead of uh, uh, GoDeP, and I will show you why. So GVT is, is really, really nice. Uh, it provides you replacement to the GoGet command line, and this tool is a replacement to the um, GoGet tool, and this, uh, this, uh, this command is called GVT fetch. So if we fetch logarus with GVT, GVT is going to fetch from GitHub uh, log rules without affecting our GoPod because he is aware of the fact that we are using vendors in, in our, um, in our, for our project because our version of Go is compatible with vendors. And this is, this is really, really, really nice because he is able also to deal with the recursive dependency again. He's doing everything by itself, examining the log rules code, fetching recursively the dependency, and we are done. If we see what we have in the Go, root, Go path, we see that all the dependencies are inside, except uh, are inside the vendor directory, not in the global Go path. So all that we need is in our project. So our project is now finally self-contained inside the Go path without affecting other directories, the world path. And this is, this is really nice because that means that our project can can you know, be moved, can, can evolve without affecting other projects that we are working on. And if we see what, uh, how it works, it works basically creating uh, a manifest file inside the vendor directory. And now we can choose what we want to do. We can choose to add to Git all the vendor directory or add only the manifest and uh, GVT is able to restore the dependency inside the vendor directory. This is really the best tool out there until Glide. And I will really, really quickly demo with you Glide. Glide is the most advanced tool out there uh, for my opinion. And Glide is really, really in the direction the Golan team is, is uh, taking uh, for the official uh, Golang man management tool that will be released uh, this, uh, probably this year, and probably Frances can tell something about it if he knows. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's see Glide. Glide is super stupid. It provides you a really, really command line from, for dummies. We, what that we have to do is Glide in it. It scan our project. It asks ask us some question, and now, now we are here. What it does, it generates a YAML file, and I like the things for dummies because I am. It generates a YAML file automatically with the dependency of our project. We can add a specific version using semantic versioning. We can, like in Python, uh, with pip, we can use semantic versioning to, to uh, specify uh, dependency constraint. It's, it's really nice. Uh, to get the dependency inside the, the directory, all that we have to do is glide install. And now it's going to get from GitHub uh, log rules, import it in the vendor directory, and we are done. 
It's the, the user experience is really similar to the one of Gem, uh, the dependency management tool with Ruby. And if we see, we have this glide lock file. Yeah, the, that contains the specific version of the file that we have. So uh, the, the, the specific the version of the dependency that we have. If we do glide, uh, glide install we, uh, and we have a lock file, we get this specific version. If we do glide update, we update, update the dependency, and glide will take care of getting the dependency that uh, satisfy the constraint we have specified in the dependency file. This is, this is really, really good. So let's, and this is, in my opinion, the best tool out there. I don't like GB, that is a really popular, another really popular tool uh, out there. I, I really prefer Glide because GB, for instance, and Dave Cheney, that is a really uh, uh, relevant person in the Golan community, pushing a lot, new standard, new things. I really like him. He's really uh, sponsoring GB. I don't like it because it's, Again, is a tool that really affects your workflow and allows something that can allows me to manage my project without, you know, enforcing me to adopt specific structure of the project, even if it's probably uh, uh, really opinionated and a good way, uh, a good thing to follow the standard. But I mean, probably with small project, I need only a main.go file, and this is fine to me without too many directories. So, so. Really, no official tool, tool for the, from the Golan uh, of designer and, and, and members. Okay, um, finally, you know, what I like of the, the, the Golan team is that they propose something when they are really, really sure about the opinion they have and they, when they are sure about understanding the real, need, the real need of the community. So they keep listen, listen our rents, they keep reading our email, and then, they, and then they, when they have the proper understanding and they have found the proper solution to the problem, they just came out with proposal. And they did the same with the dependency management in Golang. The project is called, this project is called Go Package Proposal Process. And, and this is really, really nice. Uh, because it's exactly what we need. You can, uh, you can commit the vendor directory or not, it's up to you because the project is, a, the, 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 their proposal is able to get, as, as with GVT, all the dependency we need from a lock file where, where there is the snapshot and the specific pinpoint to the version we need. Um, it supports semantic versioning, it has an engine to resolve dependency constraint um, within respect to uh, the dependency we are importing. And also, it's really, really great because they promise us that they are going to make us migrate all, everyone, to, to this new tool. So probably they are making really something awesome. What I find really promising is Russ Cox promise for 2017. He, he told us, everyone on his blog, that he's going to take care of it in, in, together with other, other really, really interesting features of Go. So he promised us, he's, he's the original author of the Go install and Go get uh, tools in, uh, in the Go programming language. He's really a guru of Golang, and he promised that he's going to uh, take care of it. So we will see something really official. If you want to track, uh, the development of this tool. You have, of course, to give a look to GPS. This tool has been developed by some people inside the committee that is going to uh, lead the, that is, go is leading the um, Go official tool design. And GPS is basically uh, a library that allows you to build your own dependency tool, and it will be the, the, the basement of the official tool. So that's all. Thank you for, again, for your attention, and if you have a question, I'm here. Any questions? Okay. Hi. So what if I want to update just one of the sub package, and also, I think, um, you didn't really show us how to restore the project, which is like the most important thing, probably not just saving content. Yeah. Can you explain us a bit more about that? Yeah, it depends. It really depends on the tool. All these tools have different approaches. Of course, the simplest things to do is to uh, commit the vendor inside the project, 
Many projects are doing it. Docker, for instance, is not because of the scale. Again, ATCD is not because of the scale. And if we take ATCD, they are using Glide as dependency management tool, and they just commit the, the lock file. And with the lock file, if you, do, if you do Glide install, you restore in your vendor directory the exactly dependency uh, that your tool used, for instance, in the continuous integration or, or the current state of the art of the dependency version you're using with your project. So you don't have, with Glide, you don't have to commit the vendor directory. You just commit the uh, Glide YAML and Glide lock files. You do Glide install and, and you in get back all the dependency at the specific version. If you want to update the dependency, you have the glide update command, and you can also give as argument the, the specific version you want to update. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, th th that's a really good question, because the, really, the real important th point is also that we are all running continuous integration and delivery pipeline. So it's really, really important. And the reason why I really care about dependency management is because I really, really care about uh, being able to have reproducible environment. And this is good, yeah. Uh, I would like to, to ask about the GoDev. Uh, you said that uh, we have to take care of uh, depths of depths. Uh, so um, log groups uh, 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 is dependent of, uh, of uh, sys unix. So if, for example, uh, log groups get uh, up update uh, that uses a new version of, of, of sys uh, unix we have to manually uh, update uh, sys unix in our uh, in our uh, repo uh no, you, you don't really have to do it manually because you can scan again from scratch your project. It's going to get again, uh, you know, the log root version is going to examine again the dependency and then you're going to do uh, the same I did, I mean, but you have to do it manually. And, and I don't like it because I, I, I would like, you know, the tool to be really uh, to read in my dependency and do everything by myself. Especially this is really important when you have, for instance, when you're in the use case of continuous integration, and, and I, I really, I, I mean, everyone knows its code and knows really well the dependency it needs. I, I, as a developer, I would like to import vendors and, and care about the specific version of the vendor, not the vendors of the vendors and so on. This is my point against Godapp. But the most important things I don't like about Godapp is the fact that it rewrites the GoPath. So this is what I don't like. I, I want in the GoPath to have only the project I'm working on. Um, this is about my workflow. It is about the workflow of other people, probably. I, I code, for instance, with different programming languages, so I do have some X. Yeah, probably Filippo tomorrow with the keynote is going to explain more, you know, uh, about GoPath, GoRoot, and so on. But, yeah. Uh, first of all, very good overview on, on everything. Uh, I'd like to ask you if, if you ever had problems with the Glide on stability because yeah, uh, we I had do. included Glide in, we were using Glide in our CI, mm -hmm. and we, all, we actually used two, Circle CI and Team City. Uh, but sometimes Glide just, just stops uh, when we are doing restores. Yeah. It just stops by, by no reason. And, f and that's because that's why we needed to move to, to GoDap. Yeah, is it I stable right now? Or I, I know, I had some issue at the very beginning because I've been I, I've been so, so happy of seeing it that I started using very early. It was not stable. Now it is. And also the good thing about Glide is this issue. They are moving to GPS that will be, you know, uh, the tool uh, that we'll also use, uh, the, 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 the resolution tool to resolve the, 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 the dependency uh, constraint. And, and, and this will be mainly to improve the stability of the tool. So it, it's, it's starting to get stable. And yeah, please move to GVT, not to Godap. <laughs> if you want to switch back, yeah, yeah. But it's it's improving. Yeah, this is a good question. Yeah. A little tip about mm, the stability: you can uh, check out the same version of the Glide, and uh, you can use the same version on CI on uh, yeah. your development machine. I think this is the best way. Yeah, this in, is in how we work. And uh, if you, we now use Glide uh, 0 
Uh, they have uh, some huge updates in uh, 0.12 with cache, with uh, something else. And uh, if you want, you, you can just move your project to fix yeah, the fix the version of the Glide and uh, yeah. work with the new Glide. Yeah, because you know, this is, I think, the, a golden rule in this community because it's moving so fast. It's really, really important to be sure to have the same version of the tool in the development environment and in continuous integration. This is one of the reasons, for instance, why Docker uses Docker itself to compile, because in that way, with the Docker file, they can fix the explicitly dependency of the uh, build pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. If I have a, a library, uh, if I'm writing a library that depends on another library-specific version, how can I make sure that uh, users of my library will get uh, that version. Yeah, this is the, the this is the reason why they are going to develop an official tool because if you think about it, there are so many different tools that, you know, for a dependency management tool is not easy to to understand what they are using and get exactly the recursive dependency that they need. And this is the point. This is the whole point about having an official tool integrated in the Go command line and this is in my opinion why it's really important for them to make us, you know, uh, all happy about the tool they're gonna uh, deliver because if we are happy, we are gonna use it and the, everything will be simpler. Yeah, this is Thank you. the point. Yeah, and this is the point why Godapp is failing, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, so uh, thank you, Andrea. Thank you.